Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. This side Priya Bhatia and in this particular video we are starting our new amazing algorithm in machine learning and that is about the random forest. So let's try to understand the mathematical intuition behind random forest and at the end of the video I will try to show you the practical demonstration of the same. So my humble request to everyone is to watch the video till the very end so that you will be able to understand the complete understanding behind the random forest algorithm. The major prerequisite to understand this algorithm is that you already have a complete mathematical intuition behind decision tree which can be constructed via entropy or via the Gini index. Both of the mathematic, ma mathematical intuitions I have covered up in the last two videos. I hope you all remember that part. If someone has missed already that videos, first of all please try to cover up that part and then uh, you can try to you know complete this part of the video. So let's get started. So here whenever we are talking about random forest, it's a begging technique. Now I hope that you already have watched my previous video where I have clearly explained about the concept of bagging technique, right? So random forest in machine learning is a one of the bagging technique, right? So it comes under the category of a yes ensemble technique, can I say? Ensemble techniques where a multiple models are working on, multiple models are there which really helps us to get the final prediction. That's fine. Now, the question, if you all remember, I have asked in the previous session as well, that why there is a need for that? Because you know that when we are talking specifically about a decision tree model, it overfits. So in random forest, what we usually do is, we try to create multiple bags, means multiple models. Every model is a decision tree only, so that we will be able to avoid the overfitting. So the major thing that we are trying to do via the random forest is to avoid overfitting that we have in decision tree. Okay. So how basically we will be able to do that? Let's try to understand that part. So whatever things I have explained in the bagging technique, all are applicable here. So please try to listen this video till the very end and be very much conscious about that what I'm saying here. When I'm saying bagging technique, let's consider if suppose I will be having thousand number of records and let's say it's a, it's a classification problem. Okay. So you will be having four features, feature F1, feature F2, feature F3, feature F4. And then there is a target value which says that whether the target is either zero or it will be one. Okay. Now let's say that we will be having a thousand number of records. Okay. Now, what we are trying to do is, we will try to create different, different models, right? Now, for every particular model, if you all remember the concept of a bagging technique, what I told you, for example, let's say as of now, we will be having three models working internally, M1, M2, M3. Now, let's try to understand that how in random forest these things will work. In every model M1, M2, M3, the very first thing is in random forest it says that a decision tree is working on. Okay. The model is decision tree only. Now how this decision tree will be constructed, that's why in the intro part of the video I have already tell you, told, told you that you know uh, the guinea index concept, the entropy concept to measure the impurities should be clear to everyone. So that you know that how a decision tree will be constructed because that, that same concept will be applicable here. There is no difference over that part. Now here what will happen? How the decision tree will be constructed? That is something which we have to understand. Now what will happen is we are trying to create, take those particular records. But these records we are taking with replacement. Now what is the meaning of that? I hope everyone knows. So what I am saying is we are taking the rows, the records with replacement. So what is the meaning of that? The simple meaning is that here also we may have 1000 records. But the point is that there, there might be a case that out of 1,800 records are the unique records and 200 records are the duplicates records. 200 records are the duplicate records because we are taking a record with replacement. Means let's say I have taken 
randomly one record after that it's not like the, that that record will be deleted from the original data set it's there so second number of time it might be the case it might be the scenario that a person is picking up or or, uh, or a model is picking up randomly that same data that same record right similarly for m2 we are doing the same task similarly for m3 we are doing the same task so every model will be having thousand records out of those thousand records few of them are unique few of them are duplicates so that is something which you have to take in your head so here what we are trying to construct is we are trying to do is we are trying to create a randomization all and by inserting this randomization only we will be able to get rid of that overfitting part now for all those records what will happen is let's consider we will be having four features in random forest it says that out of these four features it will take n features means which is, which which can be less than the value of total number of features that we have let's consider that we will be having in total m number of features okay let's consider we will be having m number of features so what we are trying to do is we are trying to take let's say k features in the, all these decision trees and that value of k usually is approximately equals to square root of m okay if you will go to the documentation you can clearly check it out that part so every particular node you will pick up that square root of m number of features and then you will construct the decision tree on the basis of which particular node is having a, a you know higher information gain or lower guinea index i hope that part you already aware about so in that sense you will be able to create the decision tree 1 2 3 depending upon how many decision trees you want to create now how many we should create it it's again a hyper parameter which we usually indicate in in a model calling by a number of estimators i'll show you in the documentation now it's a hyper parameter which we can tune by the technique of uh, hyper parameter optimization which i'll talk about in the upcoming sessions that can be done via the random random search cv or uh, grid search cv but yes so here on the basis of how many number of decision trees you want to construct you can construct that now suppose if let's consider that we are dealing with a classification problem let's consider we are dealing with a classification problem so what will happen is there is a concept of majority voting which will come into picture i have already explained about that part right in the bagging techniques itself so what will happen let's say model m1 is saying that the result should be uh, zero model m2 is saying that the result should be zero and model m3 is saying that the result should be one so automatically because the majority vote is going towards zero the result will come out to be zero so that will be the final prediction by the model that will be the final prediction by the model simple thing right simple story now if suppose the problem is of regression part because you all know that decision tree will work for both classification and regression and in random forest we are using decision tree model only so obviously random forest will also work for both the task classification as well as regression so what will happen here as well let's consider that your m1 model is giving you some continuous value let's say it will be 4.79 you are trying to predict maybe the price of a house so it will be cr model m2 is predicting the price of a house as 3.25 cr maybe model m3 is predicting the price of a house as let's say uh 5.72 cr so what will happen is the final prediction is the average of whatever values i will be able to get so if it is x1 it is x2 it is x3 so you all know that what we will do in 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 case of a, a regression task is we will try to take a average of that so the answer will come out to be x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by the value of 3 right so with this we will be able to get the final answer of a given regression task so in this way we will be able to create a complete random forest model now here you can just refer the documentation while doing the implementation of random forest that how we can do the implementation we will be having again just like a decision tree or bagging uh, technique classifier here we will also have random forest classifier or random forest regressor as i told you that the number of estimate estimators is the number of decision trees you want to create in that forest which will be by default 100 similarly criteria i hope you all remember we will be having either gini or uh, entropy by default it will be gini and the maximum number of features which i was talking about 
whenever we are trying to create a different different models m1 m2 m3 how many maximum number of features you want to take from the original feature by default as i told you it will be square root of that original feature the number that you have right so now what we can do as of now i just show you why the default values i will not do any hyperparameter optimization but very soon in the upcoming videos i'll come up where i'll talk about that why hyperparameter optimization is important and with the help of that how we will be able to generate a better accurate models right again that's very important part but let's not cover up that part in this video itself let's focus on the implementation of now random forest classifier or random forest regressor here intentionally i am picking up a problem of the same a similar problem that i have picked up in the decision tree part uh, that, that is wine quality uh, red dot csv csv data, data set so what we will do is we will try to create a random forest model we will try to get a score out of that we will try to try to get the predictions out of that so what we will do is first of all we need to import the required library so what i will do is i will import pandas as pd i'll import uh, numpy as np i'll import maybe uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt i'll import whatever be the important libraries i have i will import all those cbone as sns okay now this is done now i have already uh, uh, copied the path of my data so what i supposed to do is i just show you the data set how it will look like so here if you will observe we will be having a topmost five records these are the features that that we have and the, at the very end we will be having a quality of a wine now here you can see that you know the quality of a wine is i believe it's of four or five categories right either it will be rated as three or four or five or six or seven or eight depending upon the features that we have right so as of now what we can do is i'm not doing any sort of eda here uh, let me uh, be very clear here what i will do is i'll directly split my data into two parts independent features and the target value and then i'll split my data into training and testing and then we will directly train our model we are skip, uh, skipping completely the eda part because i already have explained how eda can be done on top of any any sort of uh, uh, data set in the previous videos so i will not repeat that part okay so here x is something which is equals to data dot drop and what we can do is we can drop that columns which is equals to quality and obviously the x's that we want to drop is equals to one right <clears throat> after that what we can do is y is equals to data of and here we can take the quality as it is make sense so here we will be having now x we will be having y now what we can do is we can try to split our data into training and testing for that what we can do is we can say from sklearn dot model underscore selection i think we can import from here itself train test split and after that what we can do is we can say x train x test y train and y test so here what will happen is we can say train test split let's take x and y and uh, i am considering the random state as well as the uh, train size as constant sorry default value which which which, uh, which it takes so what will happen is now i think we will be able to have a training set and the testing set right let's check it out first x train is this particular thing right we will be having the, the features until the alcohol part then x test is something which you will be able to see the, see, the, see the remaining records that we have makes sense then y train and y test fine now what we want is we want to train a model i want to train a model which is let's say model is equals to random forest classifier that is the model name now i think we need to import that first of all and it should be present from sklearn.ensemble i believe let's see we can import random forest classifier yes so now our model is loaded done then what we can do is we can fit our model on the training set x train followed by y train now it might take time 
I'm not sure it's done. Let's see what is the score that we will be able to get model dot score on the test data x test comma y test. Let's see it's 71.5. Okay. Let's try to see the prediction model dot predict on the x test value. What we will be able to get is the values or the ratings of the quality of a wine, which is either between 5, 6, 7 and 8. Pretty much fine. You can also try to create a plot of the decision trees that you have. I hope you all remember in the last uh, videos also when I was doing the implementation of wine quality prediction using decision tree. I have shown you. But here because the by default the number of estimators will be 100. So you have to mention that which particular estimator you want to see. So what you can do is you can first of all define the figure size. So it will be fig size which is equals to let's say uh, 15 comma 15 let's say. And here what we can do is we can say tree dot plot underscore tree. And here we can mention model dot estimators estimators and here you can mention let's say I want to see the first particular tree and the filling should be equals to true. Uh, maybe for the tree part we need to again import something. Let me just try to verify. I think we need, should import something. Let's see if I'll just directly import from sklearn from sklearn import tree. Is it fine? Let's see if we get the error. Okay. So here it is constructing the first estimator, which is zero. Now you know by default it will be hundred. So uh, because you have you can see the documentation, it's mentioned its default size is hundred. It might take some time, but yeah, what you will be able to see is the uh, estimated number zero. If you will apply one for loop and you want to check all the hundred dec uh, decision trees, you can check that as well. Can you see how beautifully we will be able to get the complete decision tree, which is having an estimator value zero. It, it can be from zero to 99 now, right? Because we are having now not only single decision tree, we will be having 100 decision trees. If you want, you can just manually mention in the, uh, in the calling part that the number of estimators, estimators is equals to five or four or seven. In the next upcoming video, I will show you that how you can be able to show that, you know, for this particular uh, data set, I should, uh, you know, call the number of estimators at this, this particular number. It's again hyperparameter as I told you. So we we need to check it out that how we can optimize that hyperparameter. But yeah, that's all about the random forest and its implementation. If suppose you are dealing with a uh, regression task, again, in order to do that, just you have to change the uh, calling part. You need to import random forest regressor. That's it. Everything will remain same. And uh, the conceptual part, I have already explained that what's the difference between the classification understanding versus the regression part. There it is taking in the concept of a majority voting. In regression part, it is taking the concept of an averaging finding. Apart from this, everything will remain same. Apart from this, the logical perspective will remain same. And now you can see that why I have in the starting of the session told you that this decision tree, this random forest is a bagging technique because here also we are trying to create a multiple bags where every particular bag, every particular model is a decision tree. So now I hope that you will be able to get the complete clear cut idea behind the random forest algorithm, how it works, how it can be implemented, what's the mathematical intuition behind that. So with this, let's try to end this video and I'll see you all very soon in the upcoming video. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring. Do like the video if you really find it insightful, do share it with everyone. Do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all very soon in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye everyone, happy learning to all.